Hi, welcome to IV Chemistry. Uh, today we'll be starting the topic uh, of option D, medicinal chemistry. And in order to talk a little bit about this, we need to understand some concepts. This is why we have this first introductory uh, unit. All right. So the first thing that I want to define for you guys is what is a drug. A drug is any substance that is capable of having an effect or alter uh, either a physiological state, all right, a sensory uh, perception, or it has a psychological effect, i.e., it can affect your mood or your emotions. All right. So drugs can alter your consciousness, your metabolism, how you see the world, how you hear, uh, or even how you feel. All right. Now the big distinction that we make between drugs and medicines is that a medicine is a substance that has a beneficial health effect, that it has a therapeutic effect, something that is desired uh, in terms of uh, improving your health. That's the only difference that we really have between what is a drug or a medicine. We're going to use the term uh, drug generally um, in the IV. All right. And so let's talk about what are some of the methods of drug delivery. All right. Uh, Depending on how a drug is manufactured and uh, its stability, we will choose different uh, methods uh, to deliver the particular drug. And the most common uh, that you're most familiar probably with is oral, uh, which is obviously you just uh, ingest it. All right, you take it through your mouth and it is absorbed uh, through the stomach and your uh, gut, your intestinal system. Um, and those take, you know, tablets, pills, syrups, any of these kind of things will be taken up like this. These are normally done for very safe drugs, drugs that normally it's difficult to overdose on, all right? A second type of uh, method of delivery uh, is inhalation, all right? Uh, and that is obviously you take in the drug into your lungs where it will be quickly absorbed uh, by your alveoli and put into your bloodstream, all right? Uh, this is what happens with uh, drugs such as uh, cigarettes, uh, nicotine, all right, or also like uh, inhalers for asthma or things like this, all right. The third method of doing this we could be talking about uh, is a topical um, me method of delivery, which is obviously means having to do with your skin, all right, it's going to be either uh, absorbed by your skin or by the mucosas. So mucosas uh, are those um, tissues that normally are moist, all right? Um, and so we can talk about eye drops, we can talk about uh, nicotine patches, uh, uh, any cream or ointment that you can make put on your skin, uh, and also nasal sprays, all right? Those are not, a lot of people confuse those with inhalation because we put them up our noses, but it actually being absorbed by the mucosa tissues in your nose, it is not going all the way down to your lungs, all right? Uh, one that a lot of people do not like to talk about are suppositories, all right, which are going to be absorbed through the rectum, all right. Suppositories um, are uh, used for uh, vitamins sometimes, uh, and they're also used for laxatives, all right. And finally, uh, one that is very important method is the method that is called injection or parenteral, all right. And parenteral is uh, going to be subdivided into three different types of injections, all right. Uh, subcutaneous which is just going to be uh, placed on, under your skin, all right, between your skin and the muscle. Then uh, those are going to be just kind of simple things. Uh, some vaccines are delivered like that. If you have had any work on your, te uh, on your teeth done, uh, normally that's how you do oral anesthetics, all right. Then you have intramuscular. Uh, some other types of vitamins are actually injected into your muscle tissue. Uh, most vaccines are done this way. Uh, and most antibiotics are also done this way if you need an injected uh, antibiotic uh, when you're not in a really um, dangerous situation. Finally, uh, the most uh, involved one is intravenous. You have to find a vein and you're going to inject it directly into the bloodstream. We use this for a saline solution when you are highly dehydrated. All right, that's something that's going to be important. Uh, blood transfusions, um, chemotherapy. Uh, or if you have a very severe infection, which actually requires you to have intravenous uh, uh, antibiotics be given, all right? The most 
the quickest and most uh, effective methods are going to be intravenous injection and in, in inhalation because you will absorb your uh, drug uh, in the fastest way. All right, cool. So once we know the methods of uh, of delivery, let's talk a little bit about what is it that we want. A drug is used in order to have a particular therapeutic effect, which is the desired physiological or um, or psychological um, effect or action. All right. So this is what's going to be um, what we want this medicine to do. All right. And the side effect is any unintended physiological uh, effect. It doesn't matter whether it's a positive effect or a negative effect. A side effect is the one that we were not looking for. All right. And so, for example, uh, to give you an idea of a positive side effect, because we tend to think of only of negative side effects. Uh, aspirin was developed to um, as an an, as, as an analgesic to kind of uh, deal with your headaches and small pains. Well, one of the things that we found out is that it, it's a blood thinner. All right, that's a side effect. And while it may sound um, not positive, in fact, the blood thinning effect of aspirin is uh, quite useful for uh, patients that have had a heart, a heart attack. And so that actually allows their blood to flow a little bit easier. And this is actually a positive thing. Now, that particular side effect is a therapeutic effect for aspirin for people who actually are prescribed aspirin to help them uh, thin their blood. So what was initially a side effect has now become a therapeutic effect, but only when it is um, prescribed for that. Otherwise, it, we, we would still call it a side effect, all right? Uh, we don't take aspirin if you've had a cut because it's going to prevent clotting from happening. And so that would be the side effect. It actually prevents clotting. So that's not a good thing. If you have a cut and it, it hurts, you should take something else that doesn't have that blood staining effect like uh, Tylenol or paracetamol, all right? Uh, second uh, idea that I want to bring up is the idea of the therapeutic dose, all right? Uh, the therapeutic dose or the effective dose is the uh, minimum concentration, the minimum amount that we have to give in order to actually observe the therapeutic effect, the intended effects uh, that we wanted for that drug, all right? If you are below that, you are, you know, the, the drug is going to be ineffective because you don't have enough in your bloodstream to actually cause that. Uh, obviously, if you have too much of the drug, that can actually co co cause uh, negative effects, and we call that a toxic dose. Any dose that is higher, all right, than the therapeutic effects and where the side effects or the toxic effects are um, larger than the therapeutic ones, are those that we're going to worry about and call uh, toxic dose, all right? Now, we have this thing of therapeutic uh, ED50 and uh, TD50 and even LD50, which is a lethal dose, all right? These are doses that cause the particular effects that we're talking about in 50% of the test population of the test subjects, all right? So uh, obviously we do not test lethal dose with humans. Those are done in animal trials, and we'll talk a little bit about animal trials when we talk about um, the different phases of uh, drug research and, and development, all right? But important is to understand that uh, all of these therapeutic dose and, and toxic dose and lethal dose uh, are measured and sampled um, in order to figure out what are the uh, ideal um, dose, dose that uh, we need to use for um, these drugs, all right? And so if we have, and you see in this graph, all right, uh, if we are below the therapeutic effect, if we are in this area that I'm kind of highlighting right now, uh, it is not going to be active. There's too few, um, too low a concentration for it to cut off uh, any effect. This blue line actually is that line that actually allows or tells you that your patients are actually having um, effect. And so at this point is when the dose affects 50% of um, the patients and 50% of the patients are actually having the desired effect. They have some type of effective or therapeutic effect. Then we have this green line, which tells us when we have started to see toxic levels, all right? And we will see that at this point, TD50. TD and of course, if we're trying, trying this in animals, 
uh, we will be seeing this as the lethal effect. All right, and again, 50% uh, of the population. Now, obviously, we ethically we have tried to move away from animal testing. Uh, it is still required in most countries. Uh, so this is something that we have to think about in in terms of where and how we uh, use you know our research and and how we tend to value different organisms different than ourselves all right so that's something just to keep in mind so what i have circled here or, or or highlighted here in blue is what we call the therapeutic window therapeutic window is the range of concentrations all right between the effective and the toxic uh, levels in which patients will be able to have therapeutic effects all right uh, so again and you can see here, if, if we, for example, give different doses, if the dosage is too low, it will never get above the uh, therapeutic dose, and so it will never actually get to have an effect. Uh, if the doses are given and they're higher, we can see what would happen to the concentrations, all right, over time. And so we want to have, we want to have our patient or our subject have the concentration in, in, it, in uh, their bloodstream uh, stay inside of that therapeutic window and we want to avoid being in the toxic region all right so the uh, size or the effectiveness of that window okay uh, can be estimated or quantified by actually what is called the therapeutic index all right the therapeutic index is the ratio of the toxic dose over the effective dose all right, that number is always going to, we are going to hope that it's going to be a number larger than one. There are some drugs, some chemotherapy drugs in particular, which will have a therapeutic index that is below one, i.e. that you are going to show some toxic effects before you actually see some of those uh, beneficial effects that you want. That is uh, one of the big problems with chemotherapy, and we definitely always want to keep that in mind. Um, so how how important is the benefit that we want that we are actually willing to put up with some of the toxic um, effects or side effects that are, the drug has on, on you, all right? So when we have a drug, the drugs that have a large therapeutic index or a wide therapeutic window are going to have, uh, are going to be safer, and those are the ones that are ten, tend to be um, sold over the counter. Those that have a narrow therapeutic window um, tend to be those that are um, prescribed. They have a, they're regulated and normally are going to be given by the doctor or a nurse um, in a clinical setting. All right. Uh, why would this be so? All right. And hopefully you can see from this image, if you have a wide therapeutic window, if you have a large index, well, if you take a doses, and you take a couple extra or you, you, you don't know exactly, it's unlikely that you'll fit or you fall out of the therapeutic window into the toxic region. But if your therapeutic window is very narrow, all right, you have to monitor the uh, doses quite carefully so you do not go and overdose. All right, and this is actually one of the important things about it. We, it the, the, fear or the, the threat of an overdose is much greater with a narrow therapeutic window than with a wide therapeutic window. All right, now, another of the ideas that we have here is the idea of bioavailability. The bioavailability is how much, or what is the concentrate, uh, you know, how much of the dose is actually uh, present in the subject's um, bloodstream, all right? So, uh, not all the drug that is administered can uh, always become fully uh, absorbed into the bloodstream and available for cells to take up, all right? So this is one of the things that we, we have an issue with because drugs uh, are chemically different, so they're gonna be absorbed differently. They may have different solubilities, different polarity. Maybe if you ingest a drug uh, orally, some of it will decompose it with the uh, acidic medium in your stomach. Uh, maybe some of it will not be uh, absorbed completely through your stomach or through your small intestine and it will just be excreted. Uh, so all of those things are actually going to um, affect your bioavailability. All right, intravenous drugs are normally by definition called to be 100% uh, 
bioavailable because they are in your bloodstream. Having said that, some of those drugs, uh, the area where we want them to work, um, maybe in your bloodstream, it, it may be in your brain, which has a barrier, and so not all of it will pass into the bloodstream or to the blood um, supply of the brain, and so we can kind of have some issues with that. But generally speaking, intravenous uh, drugs are, are considered to be 100% bioavailable. All right. Now. If you take a drug regularly, all right, you are going to build what is called tolerance. And this is because your body gets used to having that drug, all right. The cellular processes may change. Uh, your body may uh, break down the drug more easily, all right. Or um, just the receptors uh, in your cells, uh, in your cell membranes and surfaces actually change and they do not trigger as much. That idea of uh, drug resistance or drug tolerance, drug tolerance is a better word, um, actually requires you then to have a higher dose in order to have a therapeutic dose, the therapeutic effects. And so even though your therapeutic uh, dose may increase, the dose that causes uh, toxicity, toxic side effects, is going to remain the same. So what is, ends up happening is that your therapeutic window narrows it becomes smaller as you develop tolerance all right and that is a problem because of course you're going to need to take more of the drug in order to uh, have the desired effects and this increases your risk of overdosing all right so an overdose can happen much more readily as uh, drug um, tolerance um, develops all right as you continue to use a drug all right and you continue to have uh, tolerance uh, building up, you also can have uh, dependence, all right, which is when you need to have a drug in order to um, feel uh, that you're functioning properly. And if you do not have the drug, if you are, you have, you're missing a dose, you're going to develop what are called withdrawal symptoms. Now, those symptoms can be very extreme, they can be small, uh, but it is going to be an issue, all right? Dependence can be psychological, it can be uh, physiological, it can be actual functioning of your cells have changed because of the presence of the drug, or it could just be something that you are addicted psychologically, all right? Um, and it becomes what we call addiction, all right? When it actually hinders your ability to function and it can lead to having social ramifications, whether it is the loss of your job, you are stealing in order to have money to get your drug, Etc. Etc. So those are actually uh, some of the social um, implications of uh, becoming uh, drug dependent and drug addicted. All right. So we're gonna take a pause here. We're gonna uh, look at the second part of this introduction in our next video.